In this unit, we shall look at some concepts that are used by recovery processes, such as the system log, checkpoints, and commit points. We will then outline the recovery procedures. The process of rolling back, undoing the effect of a transaction, will be discussed in details. Some present recovery techniques based on deferred update, also known as no undo or redo technique, and immediate update, which is known as undo or redo will also be discussed. The technique known as shadowing or shadow paging, which can be categorized as a no undo or no redo algorithm. We shall then elaborate on the recovery in multi-database transactions and the techniques used for recovery from catastrophic failure. A typical recovery problem. Data updates made by a DBMS are not automatically written to disk at each synchronization point. Therefore, there may be some delay between the commit and the actual disk writing, that is, regarding the changes as permanent and worthy of being made to disk. If there is a system failure during this delay, the system must still be able to ensure that these updates reach the disk copy of the database. Conversely, data changes that may ultimately prove to be incorrect, made for example by a transaction that is later rolled back, can sometimes be written to disk. Ensuring that only the results of complete transactions are committed to disk is an important task, which if inadequately controlled by the DBMS may lead to problems, such as the generation of an inconsistent database. Transaction Logging Transaction logging consists of keeping a record of all attempted transactions in conjunction with the use of commit points and checkpoints. System log. Committing transactions and force writing. Checkpoints. Undoing. Redoing. System log. The recovery manager overcomes many of the potential problems of transaction failure by a variety of techniques. Many of these are heavily dependent upon the existence of a special file known as a system log or simply log, sometimes called as a journal or audit trail. It contains information about the start and end of each transaction and any updates which occur in the transaction. The log keeps track of all transaction operations that affect the values of database items. This information may be needed to recover from transaction failure. The log is kept on disk, apart from the most recent log block, that is, in the process of being generated, this is stored in the main memory buffers. Thus, the majority of the log is not affected by failures except for a disk failure or catastrophic failure. In addition, the log is periodically backed up to archival storage, example, tape, to guard against such catastrophic failures. Let us now look at the types of entries that are written to the log. In these entries, T refers to a unique transaction identifier that is generated automatically by the system and used to uniquely label each transaction. Start transaction, T. This log entry records that transaction, T starts the execution. Read item, T, X. This log entry records that transaction, T reads the value of database item, X. Write item, T, X, old value, new value. This log entry records that transaction, T changes the value of the database item, X, from, old value to, new value. The old value is sometimes known, as, before image of, X, and the new value is known as, an after image of, X. Commit, T. This log entry records that transaction, T has completed all accesses to the database successfully, and its effects can be committed, recorded permanently to the database. Abort, T. This records that transaction, T has been aborted. Checkpoint. This is an additional entry to the log. The purpose of this entry will be described in a later section. Committing transactions and force writing. A transaction, T, reaches its commit point when all its operations that access the database have been executed successfully, that is, the transaction have reached a point at which it will not abort, terminate without completing. Beyond the commit point, 
the transaction is said to be committee, and its effect is assumed to be permanently recorded in the database. Commitment always involves writing a commit entry to the log, and writing the log to disk. At time of system crash, we search back in the log for all transactions, t, that have written a start transaction, t entry, into the log, but have not written commit, t entry yet, these transactions may have to be rolled back, to undo their effect on the database during recovery process. Transactions that have written their commit, t entry in the log must also have recorded all their write operations, in the log, otherwise they would not be committed, so, their effect on the database can be redone from the log entries. Force writing, is where any portion of the log, that has not been written to the disk, yet must now be written to the disk, before a transaction reaches its commit point. Checkpoints The checkpoints entry is to determine which operations need to be considered, and which can safely be ignored. The checkpoints is written into the log periodically, and always involve the writing out to the database on the disk, the effect of all write operations of committed transactions. The recovery manager of a DBMS must decide at what intervals to take a checkpoint. The intervals are usually decided on the basis of the time elapsed or the number of the committed transactions since the last checkpoint. Performing a checkpoint consists of the following operations. Suspending executions of transactions temporarily. Writing, force writing, a modified database buffers of committed transactions out to disk writing a checkpoint record to the log, and writing, force writing, a log records in main memory out to disk. A checkpoint record usually contains additional information including a list of transaction active at the time of the checkpoint, many recovery methods including the deferred and immediate update methods need this information when a transaction is rolled back, as all transactions active at the time of the checkpoint and any subsequent ones may need to be redone. In addition to the log, further security of data is provided by generating backup copies of the database held in a separate location to guard against destruction in the event of fire, flood, disk crash, etc. Undoing Undo transactions, reverse the operations of a transaction on the database. This involves examining a transaction for the log entry, write item, t. X, old value, new value, and setting the value of item, X, in the database to old value. Undoing a number of write item operations from one or more transactions from the log must proceed in the reverse order from the order in which the operations were written in the log. Redoing Redoing transactions is achieved by examining a transaction's log entry, and for every write item, T, X, old value, new value entry. The value of item, x, in the database is set to new value. Redoing a number of transactions from the log must proceed in the same order in which the operations were written in the log. The redo operations is required to be idempotent, that is, executing it over and over is equivalent to executing it just once. In fact, the whole recovery process should be idempotent. This is so because, if the system were to fail during the recovery process, the next recovery attempt might redo certain write item operations that had already been redone during the previous recovery process. The result of recovery from a crash during recovery should be the same as the result of recovering when there is no crash during recovery. Of course, repeating operations, as long as they are done in the correct way, should never leave the database in an inconsistent state, although as we have seen the repetitions may be unnecessary. Recovery Outline Recovery from transaction failures usually means that the database is restored to some state from the past so that a correct state, close to the time of failure, can be reconstructed from that past state. To do this, the system must keep information about changes to data items during transaction execution outside the database. This information is typically kept in the system log. It is important to note that a transaction may fail at any point, example, when data is being written to a buffer or when a log is being written to disk. Our recovery mechanisms must be able to cope with the unpredictable nature of transaction failure.
significantly, the recovery phase itself may fail, therefore, the recovery mechanism must also be capable of recovering from failure during recovery. Recovery from Catastrophic Failures The main technique used to handle catastrophic failures including disk crash is that of database backup. The whole database and the log are periodically copied onto a cheap storage medium such as magnetic tapes. In case of a catastrophic system failure, the latest backup copy can be reloaded from the tape to the disk and the system can be restarted. To avoid losing all the effects of transactions that have been executed since the last backup, it is customary to backup the system log by periodically copying it to magnetic tape. Recovery from non-catastrophic failures When the database is not physically damaged but has become inconsistent due to non-catastrophic failure, the strategy is to reverse the changes that cause the inconsistency by undoing some operations. It may also be necessary to redo some operations that could have been lost during the recovery process or for some other reason in order to restore a consistent state of the database. There are two major techniques for recovery from non-catastrophic transaction failures. Deferred Updates and Immediate Updates The deferred update techniques do not actually update the database until after a transaction reaches its commit point. Then, the updates are recorded in the database. Deferred update is also known as the no undo or redo algorithm. Transaction rollback. If a transaction fails for whatever reason, after updating the database, it may be necessary to roll back or undo the transaction. Any data item values that have been changed by the transaction must be returned to their previous values. The log entries are used to recover the old values of data items that must be rolled back. Cascading rollback Cascading rollback understandably can be quite time-consuming. That is why most recovery mechanisms are designed such that cascading rollback is never required. Recovery Techniques Based on Deferred Update The role of deferred updates in recovery is discussed below with further details on the use of commit points. Deferred Update Deferred Update in a Single User Environment Deferred Update in a Multi-User Environment Transaction Actions that do not affect the database Deferred Update the idea behind deferred update is to defer or postpone any actual updates to the database itself until the transaction completes its execution successfully and reaches its commit point. During transaction execution, the updates are recorded only in the log and in the transaction workspace. After the transaction reaches its commit point and the log is force written to disk, the updates are recorded in the database itself. If a transaction fails before reaching its commit point, there is no need to undo any operations because the transaction has not affected the database in any way. The steps involved in the deferred update protocol are as follows. When a transaction starts, write an entry start transaction t to the log. When any operation is performed that will change values in the database, write a log entry write item t x old value new value. When a transaction is about to commit, write a log record of the form commit, t, write all log records to disk. Commit the transaction, using the log to write the updates to the database. The writing of data to disk need not occur immediately. If the transaction aborts, ignore the log records and do not write the changes to disk. Deferred update in a single user environment. No concurrent second role is needed so that we can understand the recovery process independently of any concurrent second role method. In such an environment, the recovery algorithm can be rather simple. Deferred update in a multi-user environment. For a multi-user system with concurrency control, the recovery process may be more complex depending on the protocols used for concurrency control. The concurrency control and recovery processes are interrelated. Transaction actions that do not affect the database. 
a transaction will have actions that do not affect the database, such as generating and printing messages or reports from information retrieved from the database. Recovery techniques based on immediate update. As described next, special procedures need to be put in place to affect recovery in cases where the database allows immediate update as opposed to deferred update. Immediate update. Immediate update in a single user environment. Immediate update in multi-user environment. Immediate update. In the immediate update techniques, the database may be updated by the operations of a transaction immediately before the transaction reaches its commit point. However, these operations are typically recorded in the log on disk by force writing before they are applied to the database so that recovery is possible. Immediate update in a single user environment. If a failure occurs in a single user system, the executing transaction at the time of failure may have recorded some changes in the database. Immediate update in multi-user environment. When concurrency execution is permitted, the recovery process again depends on the protocols used for concurrency control.